As one of its natural living functions, the human body regularly gets rid of various waste material. Hi, I'm Kathy Getrist, and I'm an instructor in community health. Today, we're going to be talking about specimen collection. Most of the body's waste material is removed from the body in the form of urine or stool. Stool, if you recall from any of the other lessons, is also referred to as feces. The body also gets rid of waste in the material that's coughed up and spit out of the mouth. This is called expectoration. The material that's coughed up is called sputum. These body waste materials, when tested in the laboratory, often show changes in the sick person's body. By examining the results of laboratory tests, doctors get information that can help them make the diagnosis and decide on appropriate treatment for the patient. For these reasons, the doctor will sometimes need specimens, also called samples, for these waste products. These waste products that we're referring to today are going to be stool, urine, and sputum. Members of the healthcare nursing staff are responsible for collecting these specimens. Not all healthcare facilities permit caregivers other than nurses to collect the specimens, so be sure in your facility that you check whether or not this is a function for you to be doing. There are some specimens that are only collected by the nurse because the skill requires problem solving and knowledge that's unique to nursing. Some of those specimens are throat and blood cultures, as well as cultures of wound drainage. There has to be accuracy in urine and stool and sputum collections. There are rights which must be adhered to with all collection. First, you must be sure you have the right patient from whom the specimen is to be collected. You must look at the patient's identification bracelet for the correct name, identification number, room number when filling out the label on the specimen container. You also need to have the right specimen as ordered by the physician. The right time and date the specimen was obtained should be printed clearly on the label. The right amount measured exactly for each specimen. The right container or the cup that is the correct one for each specimen. The right label must be printed clearly so it can be read easily. And finally, the right requisition or laboratory slip lists the kind of laboratory examination to be done. It is attached securely to the container immediately after the specimen has been collected. Any unlabeled specimen should be thrown away so that mistakes will not be made. For example, misdiagnosis can occur, maybe incorrect treatment would be given, or delays can occur if there are labeling errors. Asepsis, if you recall, means free of disease-causing germs. When collecting specimens, it's very important to use good aseptic technique, which means you must wash your hands very carefully before and after collecting each specimen to prevent the spreading of germs. Patients can often assist in obtaining specimens, but they need to have careful instructions about the purpose and technique of collection to ensure that the specimens are not accidentally contaminated. Standard precautions must also be used because specimen collection is, means that there is contact with body fluids, excretions in this instance, urine, stool, and sputum. Good hand washing is required with standard precautions as well as always needing to wear gloves for all the procedures. Urine specimens are collected at different times for different reasons. 
For example, urine specimens may be ordered as part of a series of tests required at the time of admission to an institution or it might be obtained prior to surgery. Results can provide valuable information about a patient's kidney function, the possibility of infection, nutritional status, and many other things. The first urine specimen that I would like to talk about is called a routine or random urine collection. As the name suggests, it can be collected at any time during the day. However, most often it's collected in the morning. Most of us have urine that's been in our bladder all night. So the patient would urinate in the morning and the first void after that uh, would be the one that would be collected. This would be so that we could ensure that that urine specimen would be fresh. The properties of fresh urine begin to change rapidly. Therefore, it's important that you take the sample to the laboratory or refrigerate it until the delivery to the laboratory can be made. No special uh, procedure is needed to collect a random urine specimen, except that with all urine collection or stool collection or sputum, you want to make sure that the bedpan, urinal, or other specimen collector needs to be one that has never been used before. Now I'd like you to watch a demonstration of collecting a routine urine specimen. Collect your supplies. Identify the patient. Check the identification bracelet against the requisition slip. Explain the procedure to the patient. Provide for privacy. Wash your hands and put on your gloves. Clean the perineum using three towelettes. Open the towelettes and place on an under pad. For the female, separate the folds of labia and wipe with one towelette from the front to the back on one side. Discard the towelette. Wipe the other side of the labia with the second towelette from front to back then discard. Wipe down the middle from the front to the back using the third towelette. Discard when finished. For the male patient, hold the penis with one hand. Using one towelette, start at the head of the penis and using circular motions, clean from the center downward. Use the second towelette to continue the circular movement downward. Finish by using the third towelette. In an uncircumcised male, the foreskin must be retracted for effective cleansing of the meatus and during voiding. Now offer a bedpan, urinal, or assist to the bathroom and place the specimen collector in the toilet. Instruct the patient to discard the toilet tissue in a plastic bag or plastic lined waste basket. Empty the bedpan, urinal, or specimen collector into the urine container until it's about three-fourths full. Place the lid on the container and place the correct label on the container. Put the specimen and requisition in the proper sleeves of the biohazard bag. For confidentiality, be sure that the name of the patient is facing inward. Discard remaining urine in the toilet. Clean the bedpan, urinal, or specimen collector and return to their proper storage. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. Make the patient comfortable and replace the signal cord. Assist them in hand washing. Wash your hands again. Take the labeled specimen and requisition